Yes, everyone. So I um, want to introduce you to lovely Camellia, um, the garden tailor, who is a garden designer um, based in Lamberhurst. She had her first ever Chelsea flower show this year, which is very exciting. I'm sure you're going to tell us all about it. But would you like to introduce yourself properly, Camellia? Hello. Um, it's so nice to see so many familiar faces. Like I feel like I'm sitting with friends at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm Camellia, Camellia Taylor. I'm the garden tailor and I've got a studio that's not too far from here in Lamberhurst. I have a background in psychology and I transitioned from psychology to garden design about five years ago. I trained at London College of Garden Design and yeah, have been designing ever since. So psychology to garden design is yeah. like a big brave move. It was. What made you sort of take the leap and decide to go into garden design? Um, I think, so I've got two small children and so they were, they were the initial reason. So for a career change, I was thinking about what my work was going to look like with uh, a young family and it gave me a chance to rethink what I was going to do and an opportunity to retrain. Because of my background, I'm so passionate about psychology and how nature makes us feel. It makes us feel good. And so I really wanted to link that with the creative side of me. I love design. I love designing. I love plants. I love being outside. And so it was, it felt like a natural fit uh, transitioning from psychology into garden design. And like you've just said, so a big thing for you is connecting people, isn't it, with nature yeah. and gardening. Yeah. How do you go about doing that when you first meet, um, you know, a client that wants a garden design? How yeah. do you go about sort of, you know, getting that out of them? I think I listen. I think listening is probably one of the biggest things. I think the relationships between the client and me, that's really important. And so when I approach a design, I go in and listen to what they're looking for and try and pick things out. So I had a client um, not long ago who they were telling me about their wish list and what they wanted. And something they said was they wanted a garden that would take them on a journey. And, and then that was it, they left it there. And then I went away and I thought about what is a journey? Like, what does a journey mean? And how do you feel like you're going on a journey? It's that change underfoot, it's that change in texture, it's that change of smell, you need a destination. And so I really tried to break it down from a psychology point of view to, to give the client what they were looking for. What I love um, about a lot of your designs is how passionate you are for family gardens and incorporating you know things like the cedar hut and different tree houses and and really cool um you know structures like that how important is that when you go to see a family and they have young children to incorporate that into the design is it led by them or is it led by you do you know i love gardens where there's families i love gardens where there's children and i also love to have the conversations with clients that the children they the age they are now it's only for that moment in time and they're going to grow and so actually it's about creating gardens for children that are going to grow with them so if you were going to come to me as a garden designer i wouldn't be one that would be looking for climbing frames and slides and things like that I love to use natural materials I like to think outside the box like with our cedar hut mm. it was the cedar hut here it was about having a space at Corker where parents are making like a really big decision of trying to financially commit to materials and they need that time to think about it and so it was giving the children a place to go and and be and and actually it's a small space and so it was like thinking about how are you going to get into it so we put the climbing holds up the going up the side and mm. made it floating but i think i just love working with natural materials and um I'm very lucky to work with people that like working with natural materials as well. Like we make tree houses, we make dents. Um, yeah. Well, that's what that's what I love about your style is how natural all the natural materials you try to incorporate into a scheme. But I think it's so important for the younger generation to get off their iPads, like they all like to be stuck on, yeah. and actually get outside yeah. and get in the garden. I'm always, you know, when we grew up. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, that old, but. You know, there was no iPads, mobile phones were just sort of coming around. We spent most of our childhood outside. Yeah. You know, my youngster, who's five and I've got a two-year-old, you know, they're always trying to get on their iPads and, you know, we won't give it to them. But, and we're always trying to encourage them outside. So I think when you're designing a space, and that's what I love, it's so, 
And it's so important and practical to get them outside yeah. and you know spend time in the summer months doing that. Yeah, and I think it trusts them as well. So like plants that are poisonous, things like say foxgloves, uh, taxus, things like that. It's trusting that they can be in the garden and it's okay. Yeah. My seven-year-old since the age of three has been educating adults that you don't eat a foxglove <laughs> but she'll go around the garden and she'll pick things and put them in salads or make her own teas with them and so it's that education and us not wrapping kids up and letting them explore and have that independence mm, definitely um what i also love is that you 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 i've seen a lot of your gardens that you've done with jack and, and the guys at garden creations of you know bringing their kitchen garden into play as well and i think all that in the world we live in with you know the rubbish pumped into food these days is super important and it's it connects so well with what we do in our industry and um you know i have a mas massive passion for um you know growing stuff at the core of where we can find it and uh, we've got Michael up next to uh, discuss a bit more about that but Can't wait to hear I, I love that you know yeah. I think it's so important in the world we live in to encourage as many people as we can to get outside and eat properly and Absolutely. enjoy the space connect with people and yeah that that comes through in your designs I would say all the time that's, what, that's what I love about it. I th it's, it is it's um it's important and it's an area that when it comes to planting that I just love to really research and look into and see what taste the client likes but also introduce them to new ones, new herbs, maybe ones that they haven't discovered yet. I know you've touched on this a little bit already briefly, but I know obviously you're really passionate about finding, using materials and sourcing materials that are really natural and local as well. How do you go about sourcing those to make sure you're sort of as environmentally conscious as possible? So I try and look at what's around me. So uh, recently, uh, the garden that I did at Chelsea Flower Show, everything there was sourced within 15 miles of the relocation site and that was something that I was really really passionate about and we have a local quarry we have Gallagher's and they were amazing they're not too far away their stone reflects the geology of the landscape and they supplied lots of the stone for me but it's also conversations with Ollie and your the, your clay pavers and the ones that you went over to Amsterdam to source and they're ones that have been reclaimed it's the conversations I think that you have and that I encourage clients to have as well to make sure that we know where the materials are coming from that we don't import from far at, yeah overseas do you find that clients are wanting that more and more that the clients themselves are becoming more environmentally conscious or do you think there's still a lot of work to do to make them think in a sort of new way I would say there's still a lot of work to do I think that it's conversations that I love to have but it's conversations that I will have to bring up I think it's clients are really they're interested in connecting with nature they're interested in plants but I think the hard materials I think sometimes it's for them it's it's a financial cost it's that big investment um, and so maybe sometimes that comes first but it, it's a conversation that I always try to have with them. So this yeah. year, your Chelsea garden, yeah. which was, I was very lucky because I went to Chelsea and Camilla very kindly invited me up. We had a good chat. And we had a good chat. Yeah. Was, it was very exciting. Um, so it was, hang on, the natural affinity garden for Aspens, right, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah. talk us through the process, right from applying to be at Chelsea, oh, wow, yeah. to the design, to the actual build. Yeah. How did it all go? What were the challenges you faced and the sort of best bits as well for you? Okay, so it started 18 months before. Wow. So it was a really, really long process. Um, it was with Project Giving Back, and so a charity that are just up the road, uh, up at Pembury, who I've known for years, they're called Aspens, and they're a charity for people on the autism spectrum and with learning disabilities. And I've done a lot of work with them because of my background, and I, I love them as a charity. And we ended up going on this journey together. Uh, we were sponsored by Project Giving Back, and um, we had a garden that the challenges were designing a garden that's going to be viewed by the public and judged by the public and everything that goes with that that's also for a charity that they could that they want and it's for them it was always a garden that was designed for aspens to be shown at chelsea um i it was hard work 
but I loved it. If you'd have asked me before the show, would I do it again? I'd have said no. Like, <laughs> why? Well, why is that? Why would you not have done it? Just it exhausting? Was just or? so exhausting. And it was everything. It was like, uh, it was that that worry of being judged you were you're really putting yourself out there yeah. and so I would do things like I practice what I preached I'd go into the garden and I'd garden I'd put my hands in the soil and because I knew it was good for me like I was getting all the serotonin that kind of comes with putting your hands in the soil so I did things to make me feel good but um yeah it was that worry but I when I did it people said it's addictive and it was it was so <laughs> addictive it was the nicest environment I think we work in a community that is just full of so many lovely people um the designers landscape contractors nurseries and so when you're in this Chelsea bubble for those three and a half weeks you're just it's there's nothing like it it was it was it was great and I had yeah just great people and it was a team effort like it wasn't it's not one person yeah. and I was very much like it took a village to make the garden definitely and you won a silver gilt medal yeah which is amazing but um, also was there a moment during the whole sort of Chelsea um time you know the, right through from the 18 months you talked about to the again the design build and everything was there a moment in particular you can pinpoint that was like that was just the best moment of the whole experience yeah it was when Robbie who is the CEO of Aspen's it was so that morning the garden had been built it was all done and he was coming to see the garden for the first time and I was so nervous because it was their garden yeah and so I just remember standing there and he's just the nicest guy he just came in and he was just said he was blown away and it was just lovely like it was just that was the most memorable moment just seeing his face um because it was what they were going to have it was the physical from them seeing these drawings yeah. that's like well congratulations because it was beautiful 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 garden thank you Ollie, do you, have you got any yeah for those that don't know going through that process of doing a garden at chelsea what does that look like how do you get from submitting your design to sourcing the materials with different sponsors to then actually getting on site and bringing all the resources together to, to execute on it Okay, that's a, a lot of stress. Very good question. Yeah. So it starts with your sponsor. So the sponsor is um, is key. Um, and then your landscape contractor. And so then you have your design. And once you've got those three things, so they're like the three magic ingredients. It's designer, contractor and sponsor. And then you start going through the RHS. And yeah. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> um, yeah, it was getting the drawings together so you have your design but then you need your construction drawings and you need to think about every single element in the in, in detail but it's also the logistics because it's like a theatre set Chelsea it's not you're not planting a garden like you would any other garden you're making a stage set so it's thinking about for me, I was in the pavilion, so we couldn't dig down. We, everything had to be built up. So it was thinking about how that was going to work, how you're going to cover tree roots and things like that, the root balls. Mm. Um, the planting plans, it's working with some really good nurseries. So I worked with How Green, Plant Base, who were amazing. And I would go down there in the last few weeks, like a few times a week just to kind of play and just kind of before I kind of got on site just have a plan so I knew what I was going to do um the quarry were amazing so they donated all the stone to the garden and so with them again in the six months before I'd be down there I mean I think they were probably glad to see the back of me but they were it's amazing quarry though, isn't it? oh it's fantastic and there was this guy called Gattis yeah. who was just incredible and he was a stonemason and anything that I, they said I could have as much stone as I wanted and so I emptied the quarry like <laughs> I was just like They're okay still shut I'm now. gonna take you up on that um and they were brilliant and we had there was a moment the day before I was going to go up to Chelsea where this big stone water bench that I had he'd Gattis had he had to make a, a little incision so that the water could sit and he opened it up and there was a massive crack and a hole in where the water was going to be and he looked at me and he was like what are we going to do and I was like oh my god I don't want I don't want to be a diva at all 
And he was looking at me, he's like, do we need to find another one? I was like, I'm so sorry, but can we? And he was amazing. And we just found another one, got it sorted and had the most beautiful stone. It was like a happy accident, but um, it's just working with brilliant people. Mm. And so what, what, how long is that process? Because so, I know, uh, you know, sort of submitting your design for Chelsea is, you know, you have to do that. Is it 12 months before or how many? So you would be, so for Chelsea next year, for next May, you would have submitted them in June, July this year. Uh, yeah, this year. Yeah. And so, yeah, Quite at the moment, process, it's, yeah, it? people are going through that process, waiting to find out. And then as soon as they find out, that's when they engage the nurseries. They engage the uh, the quarries and the uh, the heart. The, they would already have had an idea, I think, of who their landscape contractors would be. Oh, so, who 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 chooses the landscape contractor? Is it the designers? So the designers will, will will choose the contractors who are working on the site. And does that contractor have to be accredited to some sort of accreditation to be able to be up there and work there? How does it work with the contractor side? I think because. Chelsea is such it's such a tight space like you have no room up there so mm. they like to have people that have worked up there before got the experience and have and are familiar <coughs> with that environment yeah yeah so I guess for a contractor it's probably quite difficult to get your foot in a, in the door yeah I would if uh, for a contractor I would say the trade stands are a really good place to start because that's where you get that experience of what Chelsea's like that the logistical nightmare of yeah uh, or even at you know one of the one of the slightly smaller RHS shows yeah absolutely like um yeah Hampton Court Tatton yeah, uh, yeah there's some really good shows around to to get that experience amazing well thank you um has thank anyone you. got any questions they would like to ask <laughs> Hi. <laughs> just sort of actually connecting back to our previous speaker, I just was interested to know whether you had decided to do the Chelsea Flower Show just because of your relationship with Aspens and it was something you wanted to do for them as a sort of, you know, because you're connected to them or whether you actually thought this would be a good stepping stone to, and a, a way to grow your business. And and if it's the latter, have have you seen any benefits from that? Already. I think um, I hadn't really thought about it. It wasn't something that was on my radar until Aspen's, because uh, Aspen's gave me a call and were like, have you heard about this? And I'd kind of seen it, Project Giving Back, floating around, but I hadn't committed to anything. So it was definitely them that initiated it. I'd always heard designers talking and saying that you never get any work from Chelsea Flower Show. Like, So the shows don't actually generate work it's just a good marketing tool. And so I went into it with that in mind that, that I, so I kind of, I knew that work probably wasn't good, may not come from it, but it would be a good marketing tool. And I think actually since the show, I have had, uh, I have had interest, I have had inquiries, um, but for a show on that scale, it's, it's, it's small, but it, what it does is it creates opportunities, yeah. which is brilliant. And um, yeah, it is, it's, it's good for your business to, yeah, for marketing. Hi. Hello. Um, in the in the run up to the show, were you able to maintain maintain other projects at the same time, or did it take up all of your time? It took up all of my time. I had to speak to clients uh, ahead of time just to say I'm just not going to be around. Um, and actually, Jack, who Garden Creations, we were working on a project during uh, the the build, and we'd spoken before, hadn't we, about how it was going to go and and you were, f you were, you were absolutely fine. You just took it and ran with it. And so that was the, that was a project that was going on at the same time, but, um, clients, they understood, they, they, they were great. I think in hindsight, I would have stopped working. I worked until the day before I went up there. And I think I would have given myself a couple of weeks just before going up there, just to get my head in that space. Congratulations Thank again. <laughs> I was hoping the rain was going to stop. <laughs> <laughs>